In the dim tunnel of an old Tasmanian mine, the beam of a headlamp catches a flash of vivid orange-red. Jagged crystal spears glow like hot coals against the dark, crumbling rock. This dazzling sight is crocoite, a mineral marvel that has fascinated geologists and collectors for over a century. Once known to European scientists as the mysterious Siberian Red Lead, crocoite found its true paradise in the wilds of western Tasmania. Here, in remote tunnels and goss and outcrops, nature converged to grow forests of glittering crystals that seem almost aflame with colour. This story takes us from Siberian goldfields, where the mineral first piqued scientific curiosity, across oceans to Tasmania, where crocoite's discovery launched a global fascination. It's the chronicle of how a humble lead compound became one of the most coveted treasures of the mineral world, and how, in Tasmania, geology and human enterprise united to reveal one of nature's most breathtaking creations. This is the story of crocoite. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button, hit the bell icon, and like this video, as it's the best way to support this channel. And if you enjoy it, consider sharing it around. This is a specimen of crocoite from the Dundas Mineral Field in Tasmania, displaying vibrant orange-red prismatic crystals on an iron-stained Gaussian matrix. The intense hyacinth red colour and lustrous surface of these lead chromate crystals make Tasmanian crocoite one of the most visually striking minerals known to man. Crocoite's story in Tasmania began in the late 1800s, amid a mining boom on the wild west coast. The first reported Tasmanian crocoite turned up not at the famed Dundas mineral field, but about 50 kilometres farther north at the Hazelwood Silver Lead Mine near Waratah. In 1884, the Hazelwood deposit was discovered, and by 1888, mine inspectors had noted the presence of a startling red mineral in the oxidised lead veins. The early reports even misidentified a yellow lead carbonate as wolfenite, suggesting that observers were scrambling to describe these unusual finds. By 1893, a Tasmanian geologist finally confirmed that the red mineral was crocoasite, an older historical variant of the name crocoite, and noted it had been discovered a few years back at the Hazelwood mine. However, it was the discoveries around Dundas in 1891 to 1893 that truly put Tasmanian crocoite on the map. Prospectors chasing silver lead strikes at the Dundas mineral field uncovered gossens that glowed with orange-red crystals. This video is sponsored by italki, and as always, I only recommend products I genuinely find useful. If you're learning a language, or even just thinking about it, italki is one of the best tools out there. italki is an online language learning platform that connects you with real, native-speaking teachers for personalised one-on-one lessons. You get to learn at your own pace, on your schedule, and in a way that actually works for you. But one of the biggest advantages? You're not just memorising vocabulary, you're having real conversations. That means you improve your speaking and listening skills in a natural, practical way. Plus, you get real-time feedback and guidance from experienced language experts, not just apps or recordings. You can explore a huge range of languages and cultures from around the world, all without needing to travel or live overseas. And with italki, there are no subscriptions. You just pay per lesson, which makes it super flexible and affordable. Having a real speaking environment is crucial when learning any language. Grammar and reading matter, but real progress happens when you're speaking regularly with native speakers. And that's exactly what italki gives you. Click the link below in the description to start your language learning journey. Buy $10 in credit and get $5 free on your first lesson using my exclusive promo code, OzGeology. The discounts are only available for the first 50 users. So don't wait. Thank you italki for sponsoring this video. The Adelaide Proprietary Silver Mining Company began operations in 1891, and soon reports spread of the chromate of lead lining cavity walls in the mine. In 1892, the great mineralogist James Dwight Dana's updates did not list Tasmania as a source of crocoite, but within a year, dazzling specimens from the Adelaide mine were making their way into collections. The mineral's fame grew rapidly. In 1894, a local newspaper described a spectacular expanse of crocoite coating the roof of an Adelaide mine tunnel, and soon thereafter, 
collectors around the world realised that the finest crocoite no longer came from distant Russia. It was coming from Tasmania. The consensus is that Tasmania produces the world's most stellar crocoite specimens. The reasons lie not just in size or colour, but the sheer abundance of beautifully crystallised material that Tasmanian mines have yielded over the last 130 years. Crocoite's presence in Tasmania is the result of a special geological convergence, a natural alchemy of elements in the earth. During the late Cambrian period, rich seams of lead ore, primarily galena, were deposited in western Tasmania's rugged mountains. Much later, these lead silver lodes became exposed to surface waters and oxygen, developing gossens, rusty oxidised caps, rife with secondary minerals. Crucially, the lead deposits at Dundas and nearby districts lay alongside chromium-rich ultramafic rocks like serpentinite. As the lead-bearing ores weathered, dissolved chromium from the adjacent serpentine migrated into the lodes. In essence, chromium-bearing fluids percolated into the oxidizing lead veins, and where lead met chromate in an oxygen-rich environment, crocoite, which is made up of lead chromate, crystallized. This process occurred in the upper oxidized zone of the deposits, the gossen, yielding crocoite and a suite of other secondary minerals. The geological map of the Dundas field shows that the major crocoite bearing mines align along brecciated fault zones near belts of chromium rich rocks. In simpler terms, the richest crocoite deposits tend to line up along areas where the ground was once broken and cracked by faults, allowing water and oxygen to enter which dissolved and moved minerals around. Nearby, there were rocks naturally rich in chromium, an essential ingredient for forming crocoite. As the dissolved chromium mixed with lead from the original deposits, these vibrant orange-red crocoite crystals grew within the cracks and cavities. In places like the famous Adelaide and red lead veins, nature effectively created perfect geochemical conditions. Lead from the primary ore, chromium from the serpentine, and circulating groundwater as the mixing medium. The result was a profusion of secondary lead minerals. Iron and manganese oxides coloured the Gossen matrix. Aluminium and phosphorus from nearby sedimentary rocks contributed to rarities like dundasite and wavellite, and lead met chromium to form brilliant crocoite crystals. Each slender crystal can be seen as the fiery offspring of Tasmania's unique bedrock chemistry. But not every lead deposit produces crocoite. The ingredient of chromium is key. In Tasmania, only a handful of locales had the magic recipe. At the magnet mine near Warata, for instance, the primary ore ran through a band of basic and ultra-basic country rock, providing a ready source of chromite, iron magnesium chromate, in the walls. As that silver lead ore body oxidized, it too grew a garden of chromoladen crystals. These fortunate juxtapositions of ore and ultramafic rock made Western Tasmania one of the world's great crocoite provinces, a far-flung counterpart to the Ural Mountains of Russia where crocoite was first discovered in the 18th century. From a scientific standpoint, crocoite is a simple compound, yet it exhibits a remarkable array of crystal habits and traits that fascinate observers. It crystallizes in a monoclinic system typically forming prismatic crystals that are elongated and slender, often with a nearly square cross-section. Most Tasmanian crocoite appears as long prisms or acicular, needle-like crystals that can reach impressive sizes, occasionally over 10 cm in length in the Adelaide Mine, and historically up to 12 cm in the West Comet Mine. The terminations of the crystals are frequently incomplete or hollow, a characteristic especially noted in the Adelaide Mine specimens. These hollow terminations occur because the crystals grew rapidly in a fibrous, straw-like form. By contrast, crocoite from some other localities, like the Red Lead Mine, tends to form solid, fully terminated crystals. Crocoite is one of the few minerals classified as sectile, meaning crystals can be cut or bent slightly like soft metal. This sectility and brittleness mean that handling crocoite requires great care. Many a fine crystal has crumbled under a careless touch. Collectors quickly learn that crocoite is delicate both physically and chemically. Prolonged exposure to strong light can cause the brilliant crystals to darken or lose transparency over time. A famous example is a crocoite on display in the Smithsonian Institution that gradually turned from bright orange to an opaque maroon under museum lights. 
To preserve that blazing colour, experts often keep top specimens in dark cabinets, only bringing them out under lights for special viewings. Crocoite crystals are commonly found embedded in or encrusted by other secondary minerals that precipitated from the same fluids. Notably a soft white mineral called dundesite, a lead aluminium carbonate named after the locality, often grows as delicate sprays or crusts associated with crocoite. It also forms a solid solution series and weathering relationship with the rare mineral phenigocorite, a basic lead chromate that can appear as dark red crystals in the same deposits. The vibrant red-orange of crocoite, contrasted with snow-white dundesite, is a hallmark of specimens from dundas. Other secondary lead minerals frequently found with Tasmanian crocoite include sericite, lead carbonate, and anglesite, lead sulfate, which can form clear or yellow crystals on the same matrix. Less common associates are phosphates and arsenates, like pyromorphite, mimetite, and vocalinite or even native gold in rare instances. All these accompanying minerals tell the story of the complex chemistry in the Gossen. Lead, chromium, sulfur, phosphorus, etc. Recombining into a veritable mineral menagerie. Many of Tasmania's old mines have long since fallen silent, overtaken by moss and rainforest. Yet their names live on through the crocoite specimens they produced. Crocoite holds a special place in both culture and science, particularly in Tasmania. Culturally, crocoite is an icon of the island's mining past and natural beauty. In 2000, the Tasmanian government formally recognised this by declaring crocoite the state mineral of Tasmania. This honour reflects how deeply the mineral is ingrained in local identity. Just as the Tasmanian devil or the Huon pine are emblems of the state's fauna and flora, Crocoite symbolises the rich mineral endowment and pioneering spirit of Tasmania. No other place in Australia, or indeed the world, produces crocoite like Tasmania does. On a scientific level, Tasmanian crocoite has contributed to mineralogy and chemistry in significant ways. While the mineral itself was first identified from Russian specimens described in the 1760s, it was the analysis of crocoite that led to the discovery of the element chromium in 1797. In Tasmania, the extensive crocoite finds allowed for deeper study of how such minerals form. Geologists examined the Dundas deposit to understand the mobilisation of chromium in weathering environments, leading to insights applicable to other mining regions. For instance, the role of ultramafic rocks in introducing chromium to oxidising ore bodies. Even the humble Dundasite was first recognised in these deposits and carries the town's name into scientific literature. Finally, one cannot ignore the inspirational aspect of crocoite. Its sheer beauty has sparked many a young person's interest in geology. It appears in books and documentaries as an example of how nature can create art underground. The famed intense colour has drawn comparisons to the vermilion hues of a sunset or the plumage of an exotic bird. In Tasmania, artists and jewellers have tried to capture that beauty though crocoite is far too soft to wear. Instead, it's often photographed or even depicted in paintings. The mineral's fragility and rarity mean it doesn't lend itself to mass production or common use, which only heightens its allure as something almost magical. As one author eloquently put it, the finest Tasmanian crocoites are the most beautiful natural objects, scarcely surpassed by any other known mineral. Such is the legacy of crocoite, born of prosaic elements deep in the ground, yet emerging as a source of wonder and pride above it. In the end, the story of crocoite in Tasmania is a shining thread woven through the island's geological tapestry. It's a story of fiery colours in wet, dark tunnels, of intrepid souls who toiled for treasure, of science uncovering nature's secrets, and of a small, remote place gifting the world something unforgettably beautiful. Tasmanian crocoite reminds us that even in the most unlikely corners of the earth, there are gems waiting to ignite our imagination. Bright beacons of the natural world's creative power. I hope you found this as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.